So hi guys, so basically weird introduction to a video about well, Lightroom presets but my point kind of stands. So I've just made my girlfriend a cup of tea and myself a cup of tea and as you could see there was two different methods to that. One had sugar, one had milk, one didn't have milk. It's basically your preference. So why is photography any different than two cups of tea? One might be your cup of tea, one might not be. And one might be what you started drinking and eventually changed into. So today we're basically going to go over the Lightroom presets, how to create them, and how to kind of hone in your style and find your cup of tea. Alright guys, so let's jump into some editing. As you can see I'm using Lightroom Classic at the moment and I will be doing for the majority of the video but I do have uh, Lightroom CC here to show you an interesting feature. So today the video is about not just um, basically how to build a preset but how to kind of hone in on the style and create what you like. And that can be really hard to do. There's not many videos that really talk about like what you like and what you want to do effectively. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a funny one. So here on Lightroom CC, if you go under discover and then preset downloadable, you can take a look through loads of different styles of editing. See, look at that, that's very interesting. And you can see the original there as well, which is really cool. So yeah, it might not be a bad idea, just if you're a bit not sure of your idea, is to look through it to start with. Like, have a look through, see what you kind of want to incorporate into your own photography, see what you're not too bothered about incorporating into your own photography, uh, see what you like, see what you don't like, that kind of thing. Another good um, option for this is Instagram as well. You can spend hours looking through photographers' Instagrams, um, seeing if there's like a style you want to adopt. It's not like on Lightroom, you can download the preset and use that from, from there with this new feature they've added anyway. Uh, but with uh, other photographers, you can even buy their, a lot of like professional photographers will let you buy their presets, which is a good jumping off point, which leads me onto the video in hand creating your style so obviously especially if you're using social media um, you want to kind of have a consistent style of photography now the way in the past i've gotten around this is by using a professional photographer's presets i bought a pack of presets and that is from john branch uh, he's a wedding photographer out in atlanta brilliant youtube channel you should check it out um it's great it's uh because i do um weddings on time to time and that's kind of where i started with his presets and i just enjoyed them so i've pretty much been using them for everything but that has become lazy now to the extent where i'm changing so much of his presets to kind of coexist with the style that i've created that it's time to create my own so if you look on here what my usual editing flow would look like is i would have clicked this and then change the composition to kind of be what it needs to be there which is lovely so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to use john branch's natural feels color which is the one that i use predominantly for most of my photos and edit it from there so changing the preset so on this slider on the right if you're using lightroom cc you will have it as well it's important to look through every aspect and change as needed so I always have my white balance as shot. I have Sony a7 III, kind of manages it most times. But of course you can switch it to auto if you want, which does add a bit more color into it in this case. But I like as shot. I usually think that uh, the camera does a better option of white balancing than the uh, photo, um, than the Lightroom does, unfortunately. So yeah, let's look here. So I'm gonna change my exposure to where it needs to be. Now I always underexpose my photos a little bit. So if my exposure is a bit higher here, that will go through onto the preset. And yeah, of course, you're going to have to tweak it. You're always going to have to tweak it. But I'm going to put that at two as standard here. I'm going to leave my contrast as it is. I don't like using contrast in Lightroom. It's not really my cup of tea there. But John Branch, as you see, has the highlights down to minus 100. So I'm going to change that and bring it to minus 
55. See what I mean? Just going through it, changing it to your style. So you might like it at, well, not like that. I imagine nobody really likes it like that. But you might like it having the highlights on to create this kind of radiance around the subject. Um, but I don't, so I'm going to go down to 49 or 55, like I originally said. Let's get that here. I'm going to try and run through this a bit quicker now so you see what I mean. I usually have my shadows, see here, I would always turn my shadows down a little bit to create a kind of mood to it, which is, again, not coexistent with John Branch's style, which is the person's preset I bought there. Let's see here. Now, this is important. John Branch's uh, preset only has plus four on clarity. I love a bit of dehaze. I know it's a bit lazy, but... If you're going to use it, you may as well. Like it's a, it's a lovely little thing. I'd always put this up to about nine, and leave the texture as it is there. But of course, like I said, go through everything and just play around with it until you find your kind of niche that you're wanting to go for. Now the saturation, especially in these buildings here, you can see the redness, but it's already at minus thirty-five. So if I just play around here see obviously we don't want it that saturated that's a hundred percent and we don't want it black and white effectively so we had it on 35 before i thought that was a bit too low for what i'm looking for so i'm going to raise that up to minus 20 and as you can see a little bit more of the colors come in that's lovely there it's kind of brought out what i would class as more my image um, than anything else now we're going to leave the HSL out for a second and go down to the uh, detail in the photos. So this is where your preset can really kind of not shine, but uh, where it's either works or it doesn't work. Now, with the preset that I've previously downloaded, I thought it was brilliant. It did the sharpening perfectly like I I'm very happy with how it works with the how the Sony a7 III shoots. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Um, right now the noise reduction is great but I'm actually going to take that down to 25 now that's just indicative of my camera because the a7 III shoots very well um, especially in low light situations so you never have to really worry about um, noise too much as you can see not much noise has crept in there from from 30 to 25 there it's not really kept in that being said I'll probably go 27 just to be safe there now don't mess around with anything under lens correction or transform unless your lens correction is um, of course uh, empty like you just turn your lens correction on <coughs> just turn your lens correction on automatic for the lens of your camera and then obviously it'll um it'll look at how your camera shoots and change the photo to coincide with that a lot better now transform as well leave this because what transform does is it basically if i click usually just use the auto feature it makes it up right now that is a lot nicer and i would be using that for the finished product but i don't want every photo um, that i use to automatically transform the image especially when i'm batch editing that doesn't really work out now, vignette. Some people use a lot of vignette. I will always put it down to at least minus 10. And it just creates a little kind of ambiance around it. Like if I just click like here, shift. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit of an ambiance there. Very nice. Now, great. That's, this is a big thing. So in every photo I go on to, I have to edit this in some way because... I'm not sure if you can see too much grain here, but see here in this brickwork, you probably see it there. Um, the preset I was using before always has grain set to 30. Um, now, I can understand the use of grain in some photos, but I don't particularly like it. I like to have as little grain as possible, as clear as an image as possible. It doesn't really add anything artistically to it for me, um, but I understand why some people like it. And again, it comes down to, to preferences and what you enjoy. So yeah, I would always have the grain as low as possible. Now, calibrations. So what I'm noticing here is, with the uh, John Branch kind of preset we've been looking at, as you can see in here, 
the red has plus 35. Now I'm going to drop that down a bit, see how it kind of looks afterwards. See, it kind of takes out the, the kind of punch in the red backdrop. So I'm going to keep that as it was. Because, like I said, when you select a preset, there is a reason for it. You like that preset. And it's, there's nothing wrong in creating your own presets out of this. You enjoyed some aspects of it, but some aspects weren't working for you. Now, if we look at the green. So, the hue and the saturation of the green. Saturation has been turned down. So, if I was to turn that up, as you can see, the greens are getting greener. Now, I really like having green in my photos. Um, like, and... It, this waters it down significantly, so I'm going to put that up to zero and move this down to zero and put the colours back to effectively green being neutral there. Now, actually, what I'm going to do instead is turn the hue down ever so slightly, not that much, turn the hue down to minus five. and then turn the saturation up to plus five. And there we go. Now we have a bit more of a balanced green. It looks a lot more vibrant in the back of the photo. I mean, for this photo, it wouldn't be a bad idea to turn down the green to take away subject from, uh, take away from the subject anyway, because that kind of draws your eye. Um, but this is, again, we're thinking overall for the composition of most of your photos. You can still do individual tweaks after applying a preset. And the blues, I'm quite happy with the blues. It makes the sky look nice. Now, I'm happy with the rough idea of this preset. So what you're going to do is go over to this little plus symbol over here and create your preset. So I'm going to call this JSM... Uh, JSM, hmm, that's an interesting one, JSM primary image. So JSM primary image, this is the one I'm expecting to use for most of my images. Now, treatment and profile, have that set. Basic, have that set with everything in there. So basically everything that we've touched, we need to do, uh, have in there. I'm going to turn off transform. Like I said, you don't want the photo transforming and um, not cropping, but putting it upright for automatically for every single photo you have. So I'd turn that off. Leave your calibrations on because that knows what your camera is and what lens. And I've never had an issue with the automatic calibration systems on Lightrooms. Uh, of course, if you want to go and play around with that, you can do, but I've never had any particular issues with that. And there, I've created my preset. Now, obviously, I'm just going to go to user presets here. I did a test earlier, which was that, and select that now. So now that's selected, that's basically the same image, so it shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to play around with it a bit more and get it to exactly what I want to be. Maybe I want the dehaze a bit higher for this photo. Lovely. Look at that shadow over there. That's my style. That. Not taking anything away from the backdrop. That's my style there. Now, Here's the second image. So this is, again, another street photography kind of photo I've done. A bit of architecture in Amsterdam there. So let's test my image. See, now that's made it very bright straight off the bat because I saved it as a bright image. Now remember, usually I underexpose photos, so that should be fine. But that's kind of roughly got it where I needed it to be. So again, now I'll just kind of drop the exposure a little bit maybe I can make a separate preset for um, high exposure photos and of course make different presets for different clients that we're using at the time maybe I want a bit more dehaze look at that it kind of brings it out a bit there we are but previously I was having to go around and edit every single one of these to coincide with my style that I've created uh, but now it's roughly where I want it to be. No grain, uh, the colours are nice and green there. So got, although it's not oversaturated, I would say, because the hue's a bit low, it is still showing the colour. And then, of course, like I said, we should do on this photo there. I want to transform it. 
but I'm glad that wasn't put in automatically on the photo because not every photo does need it and not every photo will um, do it properly like Lightroom does miss the bell oh, I love how you can just see each individual one on there perfectly but yeah that's basically how you go through and create a style and do it I mean I'm not expecting you to go away after this video and be like oh I'm going to create my own style which is going to see me through. No, your style is going to be ever changing. Like I started just editing each photo individually and then I started using presets and now I figured it's time to use my own style and edit um, presets into my own style and that's probably going to be the venture you go on to, using other people's presets until you kind of know what you like. So don't expect straight away to go away and consistently putting out the same style of photos every time. But at the same time, don't feel bad about using other people's presets. That's why they put them up there to help new photographers, to help people to create their own style. And it'll make whatever social media you're using, whatever kind of um, portfolio you've got look consistent, which is key. I mean, if you go looking for a wedding photographer, for example, and every photo's got a different style of editing, you're not going to be interested. And if you go looking for a wedding photographer, every one photo is exactly the same as the other, like all very similar styles, but they're not your style, they're not going to be interested. But then you will find one that is your style. And if as long as they've got consistent photos, that's what you're going to hire in the end of the day. So remember that for your own photography effectively. Anyway, that's all guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day there.